Hi everybody, this is Sean Heideman, designated broker with Position Realty. Today I'm recording my uh, Phoenix Market Report for the month of April. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I'm going to be going over some information um, pertaining to the Phoenix Market. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to my channel below if, if you like what, the, what I have to present. Um, so let's get started here with the market report. Uh, as you see here, uh, there's some uh, new developments and stuff going on in the Phoenix area. Core point, um, ready for the next step towards construction of battery plant in Buckeye. So there's a big plant going in Buckeye. When a $2 billion uh, facility opens, um, Am Amcor will become Peoria's largest private employer. Metro Center uh, is set for demolition to start. This spring, a major redevelopment there. There's a $850 million redevelopment going in there. It's a multifamily, uh, 2,600 units there, 150 square feet of commercial space, <coughs> retail hotel. Old Dominion, uh, is a new uh, Buckeye term terminal, will be bringing up 350 high salary jobs and a 2,000 acre tech park could be established in Buckeye for a major employer. So, uh, according to this article, uh, Arizona is now one of the least affordable states for home buyers. New data shows Arizona's 2023 medium home value of 428,000, or 6.9 times the income per capita, is 62,091. Um, <clears throat> per capita income counts each man, woman, and child, and even newborn babies. Valley singles need to save 19 more years than a couple uh, to afford a starter home. The median income for singles is just under $43,000 in Phoenix compared to over $86,000 for couples. The starter homes could cost an average of about $316,000 in Phoenix. You can still find some stuff around, around that price range. Um, so this is... This, um, were put together by the Cromford Report, she put. Half of the population is below average intelligence. And then uh, Dwayne says, false, half the population is below median. So more than half of the population is below the median uh, in terms of being able to afford to buy a home. This is a uh, affordability index by the National Association of Home Builders, uh, Phoenix Metro Area Home Opportunity Index. So Phoenix is below the national uh, but above Los Angeles, which is Los Angeles, everybody knows that uh, prices there are expensive. But um, home affordability has dropped here since, you know, we were above the national back in 2020 and then COVID hit and then whoosh, everything went down. Came back up a little bit here in the fourth quarter and first quarter of 2023, but it's going back down again. Consumer price index year over year percentage change. Um, so this is the blue is the Phoenix, the red is the United States. The United States is um, above Phoenix. Phoenix is dropping as far as consumer price index. Um, so this could be a good sign showing that uh, consumer prices are going going down. Mortgage rates, um, <clears throat> the conventional rate is kind of high, 7.6%. FHA is around 6.47%. Um, still not quite affordable. We need to get down to more like the, the low sixes and fives in order to get everybody off the fence and, and wanting to purchase again. So we need to be around these, these rates here. The Fed funds rate and the Treasury and the two-year two bond. So the two-year bond is still above the 10-year Treasury, which it should be the opposite way around. So if you invest your money for 10 years, uh, you would expect to have a higher return than um, if you only invested it for two years, a higher risk that way. Unemployment and the two-year bond. <clears throat> So as you see here, the recession back in 1980, now each recession, unemployment goes above the two-year bond, and then the um, the bonds start to decline. 
So right now, unemployment is still low, uh, lower than the two-year bond. So once unemployment goes up, which is what everybody's looking for, then the two-year bond is going to go down, and then reversion is going to correct. Mortgage rates are going to correct as well. <clears throat> Accepted contracts weekly. So uh, 2024 is right around about the same, just below uh, accepted contracts for 2023. Uh, the Carnford Market Index uh, shows here that we are still quite in a seller's market, not quite a balanced market. Supply is, uh, is high, and demand is low. Um, as you see, supply is going up. Here's another graph of the market, uh, profit market index shows that the demand is higher than the supply. And so here's the overall market, profit market index. It still shows that it's kind of plateaued and kind of declining. So if you're a flipper out there, um, you want to make sure that you are purchasing the property with enough spread there. Um, in case the market does make a turn, uh, you don't want to be stuck holding the property. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that there's enough, enough, enough of a spread there. And so this is uh, all the flippers, the so flip sales in that last 180 days. So generally, if a flipper uh, purchases a property at 30% of ARV, then um, the flip should be successful. Um, right now we're at 26%, which is where flippers are, are picking up properties and selling them. <clears throat> so the blue line is acquisition price and the sell price. So this is the, the spread between the, the buy and the flip. Corn for market index, uh, this shows by city. So it looks like Chandler's gone up, Gilbert's gone back down. Um, Cave Creek, Surprise, and Curtis Valley are in balanced markets, bars market. If you're looking for a good deal, Queen Creek, Goodyear, Maricopa, and Buckeye are buyer's markets. <clears throat> Appreciation, the median sales price. So uh, as of March, it's $447,000. Um, it's declined a little bit here. Um, so since March 2022, we're down 9.1%. And from March of last year, we're up 6.4%. <clears throat> average monthly sale. Um, if you're looking at the average monthly price per square foot, then we're down from March 2022 to 23, 7, and we're up 4.9%. Um, homes over 2,500 square feet is considered a luxury property. So luxury properties are up 7.2% since last year. Contract ratio, this shows the supply um, from 2023 and 2024. So our supply is a little bit is higher than it was last year. And under contract, which is demand, uh, it's sli slightly down. Concessions, um, you're still able to get a concession around 46% of the, of, the, uh, of the closings, or about, no, April 43. which equates to about uh, $9,200 um, in seller concessions. So when you're out there submitting your offers, um, you can make sure that you get in there, uh, ask the seller uh, for some kind of concession. You can help it uh, to buy down your interest rate to make it a little more affordable for you or uh, use it towards your closing costs. <clears throat> days on market, um, this is by year. So 2024, so far we're at 29 days. Last year is at 23, it's a little bit better. And last year, seven days, five days, this is during the COVID boom, 26, 20, 23. So we're back to right around uh, 2015 and 2016. So that concludes uh, the Phoenix Market Report. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching the video. It was informative. Uh, so you can make a decision if you're going to buy or sell this year. Um, if you have any questions or are interested in listing or buying, please make sure that you contact me on below. I have all my contact information for you to reach out on my social media and everything there. So uh, thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video.